What's up everyone, welcome back to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'll be back on the BMW R60-5. In my last episode, I gave you guys an introduction on this motorcycle, and I gave you guys a little bit of history on BMWs themselves. So in today's video, I will check the compression of each cylinder on this engine, but before I get to the compression test, I really want to remove this front fairing as it casts a shadow on the motorcycle. I have some natural light over here on the left, and it just covers everything, so I want to remove this first, and then I'll also remove the luggage bags in the back so we have the accessories off the motorcycle. In my introduction video, I shared with you guys the front fairing. This is from 1976. Back in the day, this was super popular. That's why they made so many and sold so many. Nowadays, nobody really wants this anymore. Unless it's standard to your motorcycle, then it matches a little bit better. But this will be removed right away. And after that, I'll look at the Craven luggage bags in the back. These are made by Craven Equipment and these were produced in England. Um, they were very popular, especially for soft bags. The hard cover bags weren't very popular. And I think this style in general wasn't very popular because I shared a post in a Facebook group full of BMW enthusiasts. And many people are very interested in these bags right here. I personally didn't know they were that popular or let's say that rare. Um, I actually don't know how many they made, but many people pointed these out and they were actually interested in these bags. Um, so I will be removing them. I won't throw them away. I just wanted to get them off the bike. So I also have better access to parts on the machine. And if I feel like it, I might actually give these a fresh look later on. But right now I will just be putting them aside. Same with the front fairing. Right now, I'll share with you guys a time lapse of the fairing removal. There are six bolts around this perimeter and a little bit of wiring. But let me share with you guys some close up views and get this done. Then we'll move on to the luggage bags. And this is how the BMW R60 currently looks like without the front fairing. In my opinion, it looks much more sporty, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Does it look sporty? Does it look more classic? What do you guys think about it? Now onto the left, I still have the front fairing and it's on the ground. I thought there were six bolts around the perimeter, but there were actually only four. So two on the left and two on the right. Then we had a nine pin connector on the left of the fairing. On the motorbike, we still have a bracket which mounts to the frame. I guess they just attach it with these hose clamps right here. Uh, I guess that worked, but I will be removing this later on. I won't remove it right now because there are a whole bunch of cables right here. This bracket uh, goes off to the right side as well. So right there. Uh, all the wiring is in the dash. As you guys may see, it is a huge mess, but they also had to take off the front light to mount it onto the fairing. I will be having a look at this because I saw a whole bunch of wiring diagrams uh, in the manual and I don't think some of these connectors are original. So I'll have a good look at the wiring in an upcoming video. Since I removed the fairing, this bike looks tiny right now. So I'll go ahead and remove those Craven luggage bags in the back and then we can get to the compression test. So I just removed those Craven luggage bags on the left and on the right side. Uh, it's very straightforward the way they assemble this. They have this little mounting bracket. On the bottom they have a slide pin so the Craven bag just slides onto this pin. You push it up against this bracket and there is one pin sticking out right here and another one right there. And then you just have to slide in those two little wires which are internally on the bags. Um, very simple setup. I will leave this on right here because I noticed the rear shock absorber is mounted to this bracket. 
on the same bolt, so I will not remove it right now. Uh, I think I can access quite a few parts from here, but I might have to anyways take a lot of this off, so I'll leave that for another video. I successfully removed the front fairing that was held in place by four bolts, and in the back, the luggage bags were on pins and held in place with safety pins. So with that all removed, this bike looks very small, but I'll get into the mechanical side of things right now before I jump on the engine and test the compression firsthand. I will bring you guys over to the table. I have two manuals open and I'll share with you guys what it says in the manual and then I'll bring that knowledge and test it over here on the BMW R60-5. So on the table, I have two manuals. One is by BMW. This is an original workshop manual and this will cover these three motorcycles. Over here is a Chilton's repair and tune-up guide. Uh, this will cover all these motorcycles right here. So I will open these up and share with you guys the specifications on the compression test. And over here, I have my compression tester gauge. I will get into that very soon, but we'll have a look at the specifications right away. So when I open up these pages, uh, it shares with me the compression check. I will give you guys a quick overview. If you guys want to, you guys can stop the video right here and read this. Then on the second page, we have our tune-up specifications. You guys can stop the video right here if you guys would like to read this. Now in the original BMW manual, we have the exact same thing. Now open up right here. We have specifications as well. So I will give you guys an overview right here. These are original specifications. You guys can stop the video and read this. So now when we read this, we have our cranking compression. We have good, average, and poor down below. And these are all our values. And up above, we have our motorcycle models. Right here, you guys will see the R60-5. It's right here. We go down below. We should have a good compression at 140 to 150 PSI, average 128 to 140, and 125 or less is poor. That would mean we have to do some engine work. Over here in the original BMW manual, we have the R60-5 right here, and our compression is above average would be around 142.2. Average is 128 to 142, and poor is anything below 128. So anything below 128 or over here around 125, is not good. I gave you guys an insight on the manual specifications. Now I'll grab the compression tester gauge and check each cylinder for compression. I'm close to the BMW and I have my compression tester gauge in my hand. All this consists of is a gauge. In our case, since we only have to have around 140 or 150 PSI, this gauge actually only has to go up to 200 or something in that range. Um, so now I have a gauge right here, which reads up to 300 PSI. So this is sufficient enough to read our BMW compression. Then we have a hose, which leads to an adapter. And this adapter has a couple combinations in case the spark plug is a different size, but we have one adapter right here. And I believe this is the correct one for this cylinder head. Uh, this thread should be exactly the same as our spark plug. Once I take the spark plug out, I will compare it with this thread and check if it is the same before I thread it into the cylinder head. and I didn't have any issues whatsoever. Everything seems to be just fine and it looks like this spark plug is brand new. So the gentleman I purchased this off of must have just replaced the spark plugs before I bought it maybe. Um, now I can go ahead and thread in the compression tester gauge. I will check the pitch and the thread size before I thread it in. So the best way to do that is just grab your compression tester gauge and hold it up right next to the spark plug. The pitch of the thread and the diameter of the thread should be exactly the same. If everything adds up, then you can take your compression tester gauge and thread it into the cylinder head. To have an accurate reading on our compression test, I have to make sure that both carburetors are wide open. So I'll go ahead and open up the throttle grip I'll open it up all the way and I'll see if I can add some zip ties and I'll see if I can add some zip ties 
to hold that down to make sure that the carburetors stay open as I crank this engine over. The throttle grip is wide open and it's held in place with three zip ties. I gave you guys a close up view and that won't go anywhere. Now the compression tester gauge is on the left cylinder and it's hand tightened. That's ready to go. On the right cylinder, I took the spark plug wire off because I do not want it to spark on that side. I will leave the spark plug in there so we do have compression over there as well. And I shut off the fuel to each carburetor so we do not have any fuel coming into the engine. That's also a very important step. As you guys will notice, I have the booster pack right in front of me and the original battery just didn't want to fire up. Uh, I believe that battery is just completely dead. So I went ahead and I wired up a bigger battery directly to the wires that are connected to the BMW harness. Uh, that way I will have sufficient power to the starter and this will allow me to get a proper compression reading. I was able to turn over the engine a couple times and I had a reading of 110 PSI on the left cylinder and 125 PSI on the right cylinder. The cylinders are dry and the engine is cold, but those values are a little bit too low. Usually 125 is already in the poor condition and on the left cylinder I have 110, so that is not good. Now the next thing I can do is take some motor oil, uh, drop it into the spark plug bore, uh, I'll let it sit for a little while and then once it's in there, I will put the pressure gauge tester back on there and test for compression. If we have a higher reading of compression with motor oil within the cylinders, that means the piston rings are sticky or they're worn out to the cylinder bore. So that's either or. If we do not have any change whatsoever, it may be that our valves are not adjusted properly that would be for the exhaust and intake, so I'll have to check that later on. But right now, I'll put the motor oil within the engine, and then we'll let it sit and turn it once more over. I turned over the engine a couple more times with the compression tester in place. The cylinder walls were lubed up, so there is oil in each cylinder. After that, I received a reading of 115 PSI on the left side, and on the far side, which is the right side, I received 135 PSI. The readings are low according to the specification sheet, and especially the left cylinder here, I'm really worried about it. Uh, it could actually just be the cylinder head gasket that's leaking because down below I did see the cylinder head leaking a little bit. I'm not sure if that's just from the oil, but it could be a blown head gasket which is causing low compression, but it also could be the valves. As many of you know, I'm not afraid to tackle a project like this. The cosmetics are one thing, but the drivetrain is super important, especially if you want to go on a longer trip. The values that I received today are not looking very good, especially on the left cylinder. Um, we have very low values, which are in the poor specifications. So now I'm going to have to have a good look at the left cylinder. But if I'm already looking at the left cylinder, I might as well just have a look at the right cylinder. If I have to buy one head gasket, I might just buy a second one as well. Uh, they might even come in a pack of two. So with that said, I might actually even just tear into the engine to make sure everything is good. Uh, even in the oil pan, the crankshaft, the camshaft, I really want to make sure that this engine is tidy and to specifications. This BMW has just over 93,000 kilometers and it would be a shame if this motorbike wouldn't make it back on the road anymore. I will tear into the engine, I will have a good look at the transmission and all the other components around the drivetrain. Once that's done, I will have a look at the cosmetics. And if you guys are interested in that, stay tuned for an upcoming episode.